In this video, we're going to test for and find earth faults in a PV string. And if you do determine that you have a fault, we're going to show you how do you actually determine where the fault is within the string. Before we do that, let's just look at a test panel which I made for myself. Um, it's simply a, a board with connectors on, and there you can connect the MC4 connectors coming from the string. Uh, it just makes it a bit safer and easier to do the connections. Um, I've cut off the little pieces of plastic there that prevents you from pulling it out again because this is a test arrangement and you want to connect and disconnect all the time. Now, this meter here, I actually use that instead of the open and the closed circuit test. So what it does is when you connect the panels, it goes through a 470 kilo ohm 2 watt resistor. And then that forms a divider chain with a 47 uh, kilo ohm adjustable resistor, which is that little one there. And you can see I took a 30 volt meter and I calibrated it in panels. So if you know you've got a 15 string, uh, a 15 panel string, then you simply adjust that until you measure 15 panels there. And then you give it to the guys and they continue using that to commission the, the strings. Um, the reason why I put in a 470 kilo ohm resistor is that when you do a measurement, you're actually drawing some power from the string. And you can see you're only drawing 2 watts. And hence why you have a, well, 2 watts maximum on a 1000 volt. Because um, that would be more or less the maximum voltage that you can test. And drawing a 2 watt means that you've got a current between, say, 1 and 2 milliamp on average. And that eliminates dry joints and bad connections. The other meter on the board here is a good old trusted 30 year old fluke and I um, promise that as soon as I make a better meter I'll buy one. So the problem with this meter is that you get an extremely accurate meter and an extremely high input impedance and when you're working with a DC side of a PV system you actually want a low impedance to eliminate bad connections. So what I've done is I've taken a 470 kilo ohm, and believe me, the number always works out to be 470 kilo ohm if you decide what to connect. And I've connected that between the negative and the positive lead. So now I have a meter with this leads on that is accurate, but it's got a low impedance. And you can see we're going to measure the voltage between the negative and this uh, probe here. And we're going to push the probe in there to measure on the positive side. And we're going to push it in there to measure on the negative side. And we'll talk about that now. So let's look at an example where you have a string. Let's call it four panels, 60 cells. And it's connected in series. And what I depicted with the outside here is the frames of the panels are connected together. If you're talking about a class 3 lighting protection arrangement, then that will probably be 6 millimeter copper wire and you'll have a 16 millimeter copper wire going to earth. I'm assuming that you're going to be doing this test in the inverter room. So you've got to make sure that you have an earth point that you can connect to in the inverter room, which is the same earth as the one you have there. And you, you will probably have that, probably the building earth or uh, earth that you establish separately uh, for the system. Now, the first thing you do is you start measuring 144 volt across. Well, you measure across there and you should get about 144 volt with four strings of 60 cells each in, in series. Then you measure the voltage between the positive lead coming from the, from the strings and earth. And let's say you measure one volt. And if you take it off and you put it on the negative side and earth, let's say you also measure one volt. Now, how is that possible? One volt plus one volt is two volt. And if you measure between that and that point here, 
you're actually getting 144 volt. Now, if you put this resistor on, this is a 470 kilo ohm, so a fairly high resistance, you managed to pull that voltage there, which was floating at whatever voltage before you put it on, and you managed to pull that down to one volt. Okay? When you took the meter off and you put it on this side, you pulled this to minus one volt, and that probably went up to 143 volt. So what we're seeing is that by using this resistance and putting it on that side and that side, you were actually able to take this voltage and move it up and down by, let's say, 142 volt. And that means that there is no connection between this floating string here and Earth. So the fact that you're measuring these two voltages, which adds up to a lot less than 144, means that there's nothing wrong with your string. Now, you're not going to measure one voltage the moment you put it on, because these panels have capacitance. And what you do find is that you have to wait a while before this voltage. It will probably start off at, say, 20 volt, and in about 20, 30 seconds, it will come down to one volt. You will also find that if it rains and it's wet, you can imagine that the water now lying across the glass of the panel creates a higher capacitance in the panel, and then it means that it will actually come down slower. And you might even start as high as 50 volt on a long string, and then over time, say 40 seconds or 50 seconds if it's wet, it will come down to 1 volt. But it will come down eventually to a low voltage. And that means that there's nothing wrong with the string. So, let's look at a string where you do have a problem. I depicted the problem by putting a resistance in there. Now, this isn't a physical resistor that is in there. It is simply my way to depict the problem. And that means that between the inside of the panel and the frame of the panel, you have something which causes a leakage. And that something is a fault. Okay? You could also have a resistance between the wiring there and the frame and earth now earth will probably be the frame and it should be the frame if you connected this correctly for a transformerless inverter again you make sure that your um, earth point where you're doing the testing in your inverter room is the same earth as that earth and now you're going to start doing the same measurement again and let's say now you measure 25 volt okay so it's a significant voltage by comparison to 144. You go to the other side and you measure 45 volt. So now you have a total of 45 plus 25, and that is 70 volt. Now 70 volt is about half of 144. And the fact that the sum of these two voltages is a significant proportion of the 144 volt means that you have a problem. Now, how do you interpret these voltages? First of all, you say 25 plus 45 is 70. 70 is a significant proportion of 144, and therefore I have a problem. Secondly, you say 25 divided by 70. Now, remember the 25 you measured on the positive side is 0.36 times 4 panels, because you have 4 panels in series there, and that is 1.43 panels. So you measured it on the positive side, so you start there and you say one and a half, and that's where my problem is in this panel. On the other side, you can say I measured 45 volts, so 45 divided by 70 is 0.64 times the four panels is 2.57. So you count one, two and a half, and lo and behold, you end up at the same point, and that makes sense. So you now know that this is the faulty panel. So you send somebody to go and look at that panel. And if you test the impedance between the leads of that panel and the frame, you should measure a resistance. And what are we talking about? What is the resistance? What you can tell him is that 144, being that voltage, divided by 70, which is the sum of the two voltages that you measured, minus 1 times 470, which is your test resistor, gives you 497. So you know that the problem that you have there 
is a resistance of 497 kilovolt. So that's how you actually determine the string in which you have a problem. And once you know that the string has a problem, that is how you determine where the problem is within the string. If you have specific problems that you would like me to cover, anything that has to do with the design, and specifically the commissioning associated with um, PV systems, then uh, let me know and we'll make a video about it.